For over a century, a tradition of intercollegiate athletic excellence has been strong in central Nebraska. This is an inside look at that tradition. This is the University of Nebraska Kearney Loper Review. Loper Review is brought to you by Nebraska Star B. From our family to yours. Hello and welcome to another edition of Loper Review. I'm your host, Randy Bushcutter. You know, over the last year and a half here on Loper Review, we've often spotlighted people who have overcome significant challenges in their life. And we have the honor of doing that again this month. Thanks to the efforts of the university's communication and community relations department, we'll take a look at how one young lady has made a big impact on the women's basketball team, even though she's not a UNK student. We'll also sit down with a three-time academic All-American in our senior spotlight. And we'll spend some extra time for an expanded edition of Antelope 101 about the man who almost literally laid the foundation of athletic excellence on this campus. So stay with us as we take a look at the roots of success on the field as well as success off of it as we continue with Loper Review right after this. Loper Review is brought to you by Nebraska Star Beef. The Nebraska Star Beef Pure Promise. No antibiotics, no hormones, humane treatment of animals, USDA choice or higher, a price that is always fair, and satisfaction guaranteed. At Nebraska Star Beef, we pay close attention to what we feed our families and are passionate about delivering beef that you can feel good about serving to your family. Visit us at NebraskaStarBeef.com for more information. Programming is made possible in part by the Museum of Nebraska Art in Kearney. From the artist explores, through the modern era, to the art of today, Mona tells the story of Nebraska through the art of Nebraska. Whether you're online at mona.unk.edu or on our doorstep, there's always something new to see and do. You're watching the Nebraska Star Beef Loper Review. Welcome back. You know, we've told you many stories here on Loper Review about people overcoming challenges. The one we're about to show is especially inspirational. Addison Samuelson was named an honorary member of the UNK women's basketball team, which was made possible by the Friends of Jacqueline Foundation and UNK coach Kevin Cheney. Through its Adopt a Child program, the foundation pairs children with brain tumors with college athletic teams. The story is told by reporter Stephanie Galloway of the UNK Communication and Community Relations Department. Addison Samuelson's fight with brain cancer started in the living room of her Cambridge home. It's always been, we're going to fight it, we're going to beat it, it's going to be over with. And I think that keeps me positive. Action! With her mom, Jessica, by her side, it was time to have some serious conversation. I think we were both in shock. I mean, cancer is a big word. Uh, but I think we both knew that we couldn't give up and that failing wasn't an option. Following surgery to remove the tumor, she endured six weeks of radiation and a year of chemotherapy, which ended in July 2013. When I had first found out that I was going to lose my hair, of course it's a big thing because I was going into high school. Radiation was pretty bad. I got sick mostly every single day. And chemo, I really can't complain because chemo never made me sick, but I know a lot of kids, it makes them sick. 
them. It's just kind of sad to know that so many kids have cancer and so I hope I'm a good influence I guess. I say it can be done and don't give up. Today, Addison is cancer free. There's been nothing but support through the whole thing and I'm very thankful that I live in a little town where everybody knows everybody and can help out. Addison is a sophomore at Cambridge High School where she is the head cheerleader, plays flute in the band, serves on student council, and is a member of the basketball, volleyball, and track teams. Made possible by the Friends of Jacqueline Foundation, Addison was named an honorary member of the University of Nebraska at Kearney's women's basketball team. Through its adopt a child program, the foundation pairs children with brain tumors with college athletic teams. We talk about issues and problems and uh, things that we have on a daily basis, but here this 13-year-old has gone through things that we have never even thought of. And s something so simple as an adoption and making her part of our family, and that's what we have here is a family, um, I just think it would enrich their lives. And I think they'll get so much from seeing her strength and the things that she's been through and finding out a little bit more about her journey um, as a sister to the point where you know they'll remember her for the rest of their lives. I wanted them to have that opportunity. Game night festivities included a pre-game jersey presentation, post-game reception with the team, and locker room ceremony where Addison was given a locker with her own nameplate. What I really want Addison to get out of it is to know that she now has 15 sisters. Uh, I wanted her to know that, that she has a home away from home, that um, we want to take care of those that are within our, our local family, and she's only an hour and a half away. And we want her to understand that we have her back, that we understand what she went through, that she's a, a champion to us, and that, that we look up to her. The Friends of Jacqueline Foundation formed in 2005 and has matched sick children with nearly 500 college teams over the past eight years. Closing out 500 children, I've been across the nation, okay, in Division I, Division II, Division III, junior college, high schools. I've met a lot of coaches, and there's a difference between coaches and leaders. And leaders develop student athletes to make change. And when I get um, a call from Coach Cheney, and he says, let's get this done now. Not let's wait till the season's over. Okay, he gets it. I can't say enough about UNK and uh, Coach Cheney and, and the whole organization here and how they've embraced uh, Madison and, and our program. Another child is gonna come out of their bedroom and their life is gonna be changed because you have engaged in, 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 in helping us raise pediatric brain tumor awareness. We hear about all the bad stuff that goes on on college campuses. Uh, the media is really good about exposing that. Well, this is, this is one program that is, is lifelong. It's, um, it's something that the university should be very proud of. Very, very proud of. As Coach Cheney said, this adoption is for life, so we look forward to a long time with Addison in the future. It's time for us to take a quick break. When we come back, though, we'll shine our senior spotlight on a UNK basketball player who was all-conference in two different conferences and a three-time academic All-American. His story is coming up next. Loper Review is brought to you by Nebraska Star Beef. The Nebraska Star Beef Pure Promise. No antibiotics, no hormones, humane treatment of animals, USDA choice or higher, a price that is always fair, and satisfaction guaranteed. At Nebraska Star Beef, we pay close attention to what we feed our families and are passionate about delivering beef that you can feel good about serving to your family. Visit us at NebraskaStarBeef.com for more information.
programming is made possible in part by the Museum of Nebraska Art in Kearney. From the artist explores, through the modern era, to the art of today, Mona tells the story of Nebraska through the art of Nebraska. Whether you're online at mona.unk.edu or on our doorstep, there's always something new to see and do. You're watching the Nebraska Star Beef Loper Review. And welcome back here to Loper Review. As promised, time now to talk to one of the senior basketball players for the UNK men's basketball team, Mike Detlinger. And Mike, first of all, it's, it's been a bit of a challenge, your, your career here in terms of picking up wins and also with the injuries. What has kept you going through all of that into your senior year? You know, for the most part, um, I really enjoyed the coaches. I've loved the community of Kearney. Um, I've come out of high school, I wanted to rep represent my state, so I chose to come to Kearney and, you know, um, just the love, love for the game of basketball has kept me here and, you know, I've enjoyed my four years here and I kind of wish I could start again. You've said you like to do it all over again, but this has been a very special year. Would you really want to repeat this year? Because this has been a, a kind of a breakthrough year for you. Yeah, it really has. And, you know, uh, we didn't start the way we wanted, but uh, we finished, finished on a high note, especially me as a senior. Uh, I was happy that we could turn our season around. Um, when did you kind of realize that that was beginning to turn around, that you were having that turnaround year? You know, at one point we were 5-10, and 10 and we kind of sat down together as a team, and we just said to each other that we knew we had the talent to, to make a run. Uh, everyone in this conference and the MIAA is, is very similar, and they're all beatable. So uh, we knew we had the talent, and once we got a few wins after that, we got our confidence going, and it just went, went from there. Last year, things didn't go as well. In fact, Coach Kropp said that a, a lot of members of the team last year were, were somewhat selfish. A, as somebody, you were junior last year, but a senior this year, how do you kind of handle that when you see some players that just don't seem to get it? You know, uh, a lot of people handle things differently. UNK has good tradition and the coaches expect a lot from us and some people just weren't willing to buy into the program. But as a senior this year, I felt a responsibility, to, you know, uh, let the other guys know that uh, there's a way that needs to be done here and if, if that's not uh, the way you want to go then this might not be the place for you and you know everyone this year bought in and it was just a great group of guys I couldn't have asked for any any better players. When you look back on the season when you look back on your career what do you hope is your legacy? You know I hope that people respect me. Uh, Coach Cobb talks about that a lot. Uh, hopefully that they they know I'm not just a good athlete, but a, a good person as well. You mentioned before that you really kind of want to stay at home, that you wanted, to, as a Nebraska player, to play here in Nebraska. Uh, how do you kind of see your role in terms of bringing in the next crop of people from the state to come to UNK? You know, I think it's huge to, to keep with players in the state of Nebraska because UNK has a tradition of that, and it's worked for them in the past. You get a lot of hardworking, hardworking kids, and, you know, I. I I'd be, be glad, more than glad, to, to help recruit in the future. And uh, people from Nebraska helped me get here, so I feel like I could do that same role as well. Obviously, you've made a great impact, not only on the court, but in the classroom as well, being an academic All-American. Um, how important was that to you, and how has the program helped you reach those goals? You know, it was, it was pretty important. My parents have instilled good grades since I was a young kid. Uh, me and my sister is a very smart girl and we kind of had a competition growing up. So uh, grades have always been huge for me and I wanted to continue that. And here at UNK, you know, the university offers such a, a good program, especially a business program, which is I'm a business finance major. And you know, as a sophomore, when I first became eligible, that was one of my goals. I made second team and then Obviously, when I was second team, I had goals to get to that first team, and you know, fortunately, I made it, and I couldn't have asked for anything else. Obviously, academics gone well for you. Where do you see that taking you down the road? Where, what are your goals coming up in the next few years? You know, basketball only lasts for so long, so uh, grades were huge for me. I wanted to be able to get a good, solid GPA so that I could find a good job. Um, in the next few years, I. I'd, I really don't have a whole lot of plans. Uh, I'm just a business finance major, would like to work something out in that degree. Uh, haven't really thought about it a whole lot. I kind of waited till basketball's over, but now it's about 
crunch time, but, you know, I'm just looking to, you know, find something that I really enjoy and hopefully stick with it. Eventually down the road, I'd like to own my own business, but I'd like to get some experience first. Is there a field you're looking at? One direction that well, business just covers everything. Yeah. You know, is there is there a direction that you, you're kind of looking at? Uh, investments. Uh, eventually, I'd like to own an investment firm or help people uh, invest their money. We, we, we like to ask this question a lot of, of those seniors um, when we kind of do our senior spotlight. When you look back at things, what is that? Is there a moment? Is there one thing that you look back more than anything else in terms of your career, whether it be in the classroom or on the court? Is there, is there that, that, that senior spotlight moment, if you will? You know, probably just all the friendships I've made and all the connections I've made and uh, the people I've met in the community. That's just been huge and I couldn't have asked for anything else. And, you know, the community has been so supportive of me, all my friends. And, you know, I just, I, I've loved Carney. You've kind of mentioned before that you may very well help recruit more people to, to the campus here at UNK. Why is that? What, what is the selling point for you? You know, I, I like people to have the opportunity that I had and uh, be able to work with the coaches. Uh, they've been instrumental in my, in my progress, my athletic progress. And, you know, I just really uh, would like to give back to UNK because they've given me so much. Mike, appreciate the time. Best luck Thank to you. Thank you. Really appreciate it. All right. It's time for us to take a quick break. When we come back with uh, Loper 101, we come back right after this. Loper Review is brought to you by Nebraska Star Beef. The Nebraska Star Beef Pure Promise. No antibiotics. No hormones. Humane treatment of animals. USDA choice or higher. A price that is always fair and satisfaction guaranteed. At Nebraska Star Beef, we pay close attention to what we feed our families and are passionate about delivering beef that you can feel good about serving to your family. Visit us at NebraskaStarBeef.com for more information. Programming is made possible in part by the Museum of Nebraska Art in Kearney. From the artist explores, through the modern era, to the art of today, Mona tells the story of Nebraska through the art of Nebraska. Whether you're online at mona.unk.edu or on our doorstep, there's always something new to see and do. You're watching the Nebraska Star Beef Loper Review. Welcome back. You know, last month we had a few firsts for you, our first edition of Antelope 101, and we took a look at the first teams here at the school. Well, this month we're going to take a look at the man and the teams who first put UNK on the map as we take a look at Antelope 101. Welcome to our second session of Antelope 101. I'm Loper Review producer DJ Johnson filling in for Professor Page who, as you recall, was filling in for Professor Kelsey. So although you're stuck with the third team, the show must go on. Last month we looked at the very beginning of athletic competition over a hundred years ago. The teams were called the Normals and they didn't have a lot of success in those early years. But that was to change when George Van Buren came to town. Van Buren had been a multi-sport standout at Cornell College in Iowa and was hired in September of 1910 to be the school's first athletic director, although our research couldn't determine if that was his actual title or not. 
As we told you last month, the first few years of athletics at the Normal School of the West had modest success at best. The level of play was barely on a par with most large area high schools and rarely competitive with other colleges. With the arrival of Van Buren, the days of having high schools and area town teams on the schedule would be phased out. One of his first steps was to have Kearney join a conference. The other members were Peru Normal, Grand Island Baptist, Hastings College, Bellevue College, and Central City College. By the time the 1910 season began, the school's mascot had become the Antelope, and by the end of the season, the team finished with a 4-4 four four record in football, the first time the school did not have a losing record. They followed that up a year later with the school's first winning record as they finished 5-3. Included in those five wins was the first over Hastings College, a 9-0 victory that ended a four-game win streak for Hastings in the series. The Van Buren-led Antelopes would follow up the 1911 win with a 40-0 victory over Hastings in 1912 and a 20-2 win in 1913 as part of two more winning seasons. One of the keys to Kearney's success was the play of Kearney high product Earl Craig. Nicknamed Irish, Craig was the team's starting quarterback and kicker beginning in 1911 and would become the leading scorer in the conference thanks to his speed and kicking ability. Craig actually left school after his junior season to play professional baseball for two years before returning to be the starting quarterback once again for his senior year. And Craig may not have even been the team's most colorful character. Among his teammates were players with nicknames like the Flying Dutchman and team captain Red Burford. Burford and Craig were named to the college All-State team. Yet another teammate, Bob Randolph, not only played for the Antelopes for four years, but in pre-NCAA days, went on to be a captain for the Northwestern University team in Chicago. In the four seasons with Van Buren as football coach, the Antelopes finished with a total record of 18, 12, and 1. There's more to come on Antelope 101, so please stay with us. Loper Review is brought to you by Nebraska Star Beef. The Nebraska Star Beef Pure Promise. No antibiotics, no hormones, humane treatment of animals, USDA choice or higher, a price that is always fair, and satisfaction guaranteed. At Nebraska Star Beef, we pay close attention to what we feed our families and are passionate about delivering beef that you can feel good about serving to your family. Visit us at NebraskaStarBeef.com for more information. Programming is made possible in part by the Museum of Nebraska Art in Kearney. From the artist explores, through the modern era, to the art of today. Mona tells the story of Nebraska through the art of Nebraska. Whether you're online at mona.unk.edu or on our doorstep, there's always something new to see and do. You're watching the Nebraska Star Beef Loper Review. Welcome back. Although George Van Buren was only in Kearney for a few years, he created the framework of a traditional college athletic program. George Van Buren also coached the basketball team, but unfortunately the Antelopes did not share in the success enjoyed by the football team, and their record for the Van Buren years was 13-24. Van Buren's biggest accomplishment in that sport was, without a doubt, the construction of an on-campus gymnasium. According to the book, A Century of Sports by Ellison Cook, the gymnasium was, for obvious reasons, nicknamed The Barn, and was constructed by athletes under Van Buren's supervision. It was 60 feet by 80 feet, slightly wider, but shorter than a regulation basketball court today. It had a dirt floor, which may not have been great for basketball, but did enable the baseball team to practice there as well. A 75-yard cinder track was squeezed in for the track team. The barn was torn down after being used for only five years, almost the amount of time it took to build its replacement. Construction on what is now Copeland Hall began in 1916 and was designed to be a state-of-the-art facility, but due to a lack of manpower and materials because of World War I, 
The building was not finished until late in 1918. A swimming pool and calisthenics room were on the first floor and the gymnasium was on the second floor. Another area where Van Buren was ahead of his time, way ahead of his time, was in his efforts to enhance the women's basketball program by strengthening the schedule and, as is common practice today, play men's and women's double headers. The women would usually play the three-on-three -three style on each end of the floor, although they would occasionally play full court five-on-five. -five. Another innovation by Van Buren, or at least an innovation that came to be during his time here in Kearney, was the creation of the K-Club. The letter winners raised money to host high school tournaments, pay for travel expenses, and not surprisingly, pay for their letter sweaters. They also maintained a trophy room and began the practice of displaying photographs of all letter winners. Many of those photos can still be viewed in the hallways of Cushing Coliseum. Van Buren had mixed success with the track program. Begun in the spring of 1911, the Antelope track team would eventually be cut just three years later due to a familiar problem that continues in athletics today, a lack of funding. However, he also began hosting a high school meet in the spring of 1911, and that event continues today, although it is now an indoor meet. Although the baseball team would also eventually fall to the budget cutter's axe, the Van Buren coach team would claim the school's first championship, although one account puts the Western Conference Championship in 1911, and another source says it was in 1912. It's speculated that the cutting of the track and baseball programs led Van Buren to leave Kearney after the spring semester of 1914. It said he was granted a leave of absence to return to the family farm in Missouri, but he never came back to Kearney. Antelope 101 was unable to find any record of what became of him after that. Despite being a pioneer who created the foundation of a true collegiate athletic program at the school, Van Buren has yet to be inducted into the UNK Athletic Hall of Fame. George Van Buren got the Antelopes running in the right direction, and we'll move forward with them on the next session of Antelope 101. Hope to see you then. Now, next month on Antelope 101, we'll take a look at the Roaring Twenties and the fact that the Antelopes didn't exactly roar during that decade. Well, that is our show for this month. We want to thank you for joining us. Until next month, see ya, and go Lopers. Loper Review is brought to you by Nebraska Star Beef. The Nebraska Star Beef Pure Promise. No antibiotics, no hormones, humane treatment of animals, USDA choice or higher, a price that is always fair, and satisfaction guaranteed. At Nebraska Star Beef, we pay close attention to what we feed our families and are passionate about delivering beef that you can feel good about serving to your family. Visit us at NebraskaStarBeef.com for more information. Programming is made possible in part by the Museum of Nebraska Art in Kearney. From the artist explores, through the modern era, to the art of today, Mona tells the story of Nebraska through the art of Nebraska. Whether you're online at mona.unk.edu or on our doorstep, there's always something new to see and do.